Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Do Nothing Project for Sunday, April 4th. Special edition. Special uber lazy edition. Um, if you've never been to the Do Nothing Project before, uh, welcome. This is uh, our little experiment in weekly virtual community and meditation. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Um, uh, you know, we just sit around, and don't do very much. Tonight we're going to lie around. And uh, we do this as a way to reset to who knows why, <laughs> because it's good to do nothing. So this evening I've got some continuing back pain issues, and I was thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to uh, – sit up right now. I've been just moving all day. Uh, but as soon as I stop to sit, it just feels uncomfortable. So I'm going to do a lying down meditation, actually. And I thought this could be a really good uh, opportunity to talk a little bit about why lying down is such an excellent meditation. Um, so the practice I'm going to guide is um, you can actually stay seated for it if you're used to doing that. But if you want to experiment with lying down, I highly recommend it. Um, even if you feel like you'll skirt with the edge of sleep, because that can happen too. Um, you know, uh, Reggie, the meditation teacher, Reggie Ray, he used to teach these retreats that's all they did for a month. They would get there and they would lie down all day, every day for a month. And it was the way he described it, and I've noticed this myself, um, is there's always another layer of tension to let go of, that our bodies are so stricken with all these intensities, don't even realize how we're kind of holding ourselves up and holding it together. And, and the idea of his retreats was that every time you breathe out, you know, it's like you can continually settle more and more and more, even laying down to the point where people just, he thought that was, you know, the, all the transformation most people need. Um, I wouldn't put words in his mouth, but something like that. Um, so this is, Think of this as the deluxe lazy edition. Um, I'm going to riff a little bit on a practice that we did a couple years back at Do Nothing Project called the Ocean Breathing. It's a really beautiful practice taught to me by this teacher, Mukti. Um, so uh, maybe Andrew can link to Mukti. She's an excellent non-dual teacher. So I'll, I'll bring in a little bit of the, the piece around kind of um, working with the breath, kind of bringing the imagination a bit, almost like you're dissolving in an ocean. You can kind of go, go with that and run with that, or you can you know, take any part of it that you like. Um, but the main piece of it is, you know, really letting yourself just kind of be slovenly, like not needing to keep the kind of like keep it together quality that's so often there in meditation. It's like you can imagine you can do this just laying down on the floor of your living room like I'm going to do right here, laying down the floor of your uh, on your bed, on a couch. Of course, you can sit if you want. But the idea is to really kind of go for it, to kind of get rid of and throw away any ideas or preconceptions about how meditation is supposed to be and let this be really an exercise in deep, holy laziness. Um, so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to guide you all in that, and that means I can lie down. I've got my own. If you got one of these, go for it. I found one of these in my desk drawer. A little airplane sleeping mask. I mean, you really want to... Let's like pull out all the stops for this deluxe lazy edition. So I'll uh, invite everyone to get into their uh, situations. So, oh yeah, I'm gonna, uh, this, this is gonna be a bit of an experiment here, if this is gonna work. Uh, and again, if you're sitting, that's totally fine. I'll, the guidance will still be very applicable. Uh, what time we got there? 806. All right. This is a very low bar, deeply unambitious meditation. Um, let me just make sure that. Can everyone see me okay? Yeah. Okay. Ring the bell. And we'll get started.
All right, so if you are going for this long down uh, deluxe lazy edition, just really let yourself kind of collapse. So you want to, and it's kind of like this feeling of being a kid, remember when you go lay down in the basement or something, or you'd be laying in the living room and the sound of the adults would be talking in the kitchen. Maybe you're laying in your bed upstairs. There's something kind of innocent about just letting yourself actually be here and do this You're kind of taking up space in this way and it's the same even if you're sitting just this attitude of like hearkening back to that time that time of just sort of being more innocent maybe and as you lay down here, you start with a few kind of deliberate deep breaths. And every time you exhale, it's really our opportunity. We're going to work with this exhale through the whole meditation. I hope people can hear me here. <laughs> okay. This is completely weird for me, too. So every time you breathe out, it's like you're breathing out a little bit of tension. Breathing out a little bit of that upright energy, the go-go energy. Finding our equanimity, of course, with this slightly strange practice, which is really the equanimity is like the <laughs> who cares meditation muscle. It's the part that's not going to get braced or uptight or judgy about things. Just kind of go along with the flow of the experiment. And flow is definitely one word we can use to prime ourselves with this practice. So if you're sitting, kind of imagine that you're dropping down from your head and you're riding this elevator down, your neck down into your belly. And if you're laying down, same thing, just sort of shift your awareness down into the belly, into that area. Just noticing the rise and fall, the slight rise and fall of the breath. You can put your hands on the belly if you like. So we're going to use our imaginations here. And the one kind of imaginative move here is imagining that you're sort of floating on the ocean. Now you're on a nice, comfy raft on a lake or whatever imaginative prop you need to make that a comfortable, imaginative scenario. So it's like you're lying on the surface of the ocean. And every time you breathe in, it's sort of like you're, this is a little swell you're riding up. And every time you breathe out, there's the little dip after the swell. So you're kind of coming down. Or you can think of it as the tide on the in breath, the tide's coming up. And the out breath, the tide's coming down.
We'll try this for just a few minutes, really connecting to that breath, connecting to this sort of imaginative framework of floating on the ocean. And every time you breathe out, imagine you're just like dissolving or dropping a little bit into that, into the water, like you're getting a little bit more porous. And if that, that whole framework is, you can kind of also just leave that aside if you like and just work with this little bit of relaxation on the out breath, this little bit of letting go. And even if you don't like working with the breath, these cues around letting go and dissolving into the ground, you can kind of take them in whatever direction you need. But stay. Awake. <laughs> That's going to be our challenge, of course, because we want to melt into the mother sea, kind of disappear. So stay lightly present. Really reveling in this do nothing spirit. Truly, we're taking it to the next level here. Letting yourself be slow and lazy and easy. And the waves rise and fall, the swell, the tide. It lifts you and then brings you down. It lifts you and we're deliberately letting this image and this slower breathing sort of calm the nervous system. No need for the muscles to work to keep you up. Everything can just sort of let go. You can have your arms at your side too, if you like. Of course, normally when we lay down, we often just go right to sleep. And just can you stay in this middle space of appreciating the feeling of not having to work the body, that rest, yet staying just on this side of wakefulness.
Good. Every time you breathe out, it's like you're letting go a little more. Even the senses, they can be sort of diffuse. Your attention is sort of diffuse. It's vaguely aware of the belly and the breath, but you can kind of let it bleed out into the space around you. So if you start to kind of drift off to sleep, then you kind of got a choice. Who am I to say that you shouldn't just nod off? But you can also kind of pull back a bit. See if you can stay aware in this space of, you know, deeper relaxation. It's kind of an equanimity thing. Can you just hold on very delicately to awareness without fighting or bracing or struggling, yet still letting the body continue to relax and dissolve and soften. Finding the rhythm of the, the swell of the wave, moving with the breath. And just this one additional cue here. As you're doing this, notice your whole being. Whatever that means for you, the whole larger feeling of being. The feeling of the body. Your own presence, the kind of hum of being here. And we can kind of imagine that being which is awareness, is the ocean. So now you're resting in your own being. Again, with every out breath, you can let attention get a little bit more diffuse. After a while, it may be that you're not really paying attention to anything in particular, although the breath is still there, the, that rhythmic rise and fall. Just seeing here, how much can you dissolve? You know, really dissolving any last tensions. Can you 
sink down even further into the floor slash ocean slash being. And what else can you let go into the ocean? Can you let wash away? Any last tendrils of effort? Thoughts come and go and drift away. Images. Can you let go even of any sense of a meditator? There's nothing here at all, just this being in the ocean. This huge expanse. No edges. Extending out to either side and below you, way below you. It's like you're plunging down. And it's like, what's the least amount of effort you can use to still stay just at that edge of awareness?
tide goes in, the tide goes out, the swell, the water rises and falls. It's like we're getting distributed more and more widely throughout the space. I have no, no idea how long we've been doing this. Hours? It's like we're lost at sea somewhere. That was it. Okay, so. Let's reconstellate here. Maybe bring back the raft. Start to feel the body. Wiggle the toes, the fingers. Mm. Mm. No, oh, yeah, we'll do a little quick, uh, just miniature, send out some friendly vibes things. So just think about who you'd like to send out some deep relaxation to. Who could you imagine really enjoying just floating in their being? Smiling as you imagine them trying to do this meditation. Yeah, but connecting to that rest, that refreshment, maybe that innocence, whatever that did for you. Maybe it did nothing. Let's imagine it did. Let's imagine you can spread that around. Most lazy do nothing project in history. People still even here. <laughs> oh, my back's are killing me. I needed that. Thank you. Hmm. And who liked it? Nice, bud. I'm glad. Ben, I'm glad you liked it. You come back to this one if you if you need in the future. Let's do a good lying down one. 
curious if any people did it while sitting, because you can do this sitting. Lots of relaxation. Expect we lost a few. Thumbs up. Yes, thumbs up, Jeff. We like that one. If you give me a thumbs up, I'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Ruthless crab loved the meditation in the ocean. Strong image for for me. Grew up on a lighthouse. No way. Interesting. Chris likes to float. Yeah, it's kind of like I. Isolation tank. Jamie, welcome, buddy. Happy Easter to you, Keith. Brooke found it deeply restful. Hmm. Yeah, you can, Ben said, the cusp of a very relaxing sleep. Of course, you can do a practice like this and just you keep that minimal awareness and relax everything you can you know you can slip right through into like a uh, lucid dream directly from waking i used to do that quite a bit really sat because her back hurts ironically sometimes that's the best way to do it mm. I expect that it's sitting back in a chair. Yeah, Aaron Brewster challenging to me a few too many jitters left. It can happen. Yeah, it's harder to do that if you're feeling jumpy. If I were, when I'm feeling jumpy, I often do a qigong, like shake off, do a shaking thing, a standing shaking um, to kind of get the energy moving a little bit. That could be something you can try. Cashew is usually laying down, so perfect. Yeah, Deirdre, it was melting into the ocean. Not melting so much. I couldn't breathe, though. True. Got to ride that line. But my back was under water, and my front was... Still me. Usher 671, preschool teacher needed this. You're welcome. Yeah, of course, there's lots of really great lying down meditations. There's lots on the internet. Um, yoga Nidra, you could Google Yoga Nidra. Um, so many good Yoga Nidra teachers there, and they merge the lying down. And there's a whole sequence of relaxation and the guy I met years ago, Richard Miller, uh, he has this group called I Rest, and he really merges the sort of non-dual piece in with the Yoga Nidra. If you're interested in looking more at that, I think he's got stuff online. Hmm. Wow, people seem to like it. That's awesome. Candace took her back ears. Many summers. Oh, the summer you lived on a 16 foot sailboat. Susan's on the magic carpet. <laughs> Laura, first visit feels relaxed and unified mindlessly. Excellent. That's what we're after. Oops. Okay, friends. Well, I'm gonna go continue this relaxing night. Okay, Deirdre's got a suggestion for a yoga nidra, uh, yoga nidra teacher, Jennifer Reis, R E I S. Check her out. Good to be with everyone on the ocean. Yes, indeed, Brooke. Maybe we should do the lying down one more often. <clears throat> Duardo likes the yoga nidra, except when he has. Acid reflux. Makes sense. Okay. Well, 
Grateful for the community. Grateful for the practice. Not sure what we're going to do next week, but the adventure of nothingness continues. Sleep well, my friends. Might just do that with the Epsom salts, Candace. Thanks for the good wishes around my back. Awesome. All right. Good night, everybody.